National Peace Committee has met with the presidential candidates, their own mates, party chairman, independent National Electoral Commission, NINEC, and civil society groups as part of efforts to ensure peaceful elections next month. Chaired by former head of state, General Abu Salami Abu Bakr, Bishop Matthew Kuka, Bishop of the Sokoto Catholic Diocese, and the Sultan of Sokoto, Abu Bakr Sahad. The committee admonished the candidates to put the unity and peace of Nigeria first. Tuji Olani Pekun compiled the story. Here is our This report. is a peace accord of the 18 presidential candidates with the National Peace Committee ahead of the presidential election. But the peace meeting started with a disagreement that initially threatens the takeoff of the party. Shortly after the gathering was called to order, Omoyele Shore objected to smaller parties being pushed behind in every peace meeting while the bigger parties are given the front row. He insisted that the seats should be allocated in alphabetical order for equity and justice. As we know that we have an important observation and this was the result. Parties are in alphabetical order. Here, as you did the last time, you put the big parties in front and relegate us to the background. Let the parties appear on these seats the same way parties appear on ballot papers on election day. Thank you very much. Thank you. It took a passionate appeal by former head of state, General Abdul Salam Abubakar, and an assurance that such will be corrected in future before Cam returned to the peace party. I have taken notes of his observation and as much as possible will try to make comments. We are not being partisan in this issue. Regardless <coughs> of uh, the mistakes that has been made, it is not intentional that we are promoting any candidate or any political party. The former head of state in his opening remark pleads with the candidates to put the nation first as they go into the February poll, bearing in mind that governance is only possible in an atmosphere of peace. I appeal to all of you to be moderate in your language, show respect to the views and concerns of one another, and listen to the concerns expressed. We are not here to find out who is wrong, but what is wrong, and to see how to correct it. The Peace Party then went into a closed-door session. At the end of the meeting, stakeholders expressed their position and expectations ahead of the election. A lot of people spoke about justice and some of their experiences in some of the states. Um, again, we're going to go back um, via the chairman, who will be who's the leader of the group, to, to see how we can uh, you know, make representations also to, to the governors, uh, speak to the political party members, the chairman and the candidates, and to see how we can all sync our differences and make sure that uh, we work together for the greater good. Because at the end of the day, it's the common good that is very, very important. We are peace-loving people. We are people-oriented party. We are those who are bringing that desired change Nigeria has been anticipating for. So we are taking the lead in ensuring that peace prospers as we foster freedom and um, progress, prosperity for this dear nation. There needs to be an audit of the process and the IT systems to give the parties and the candidates the confidence that we have a level playing field. Let's know what is involved. Let us well, let's know how the, uh, the system is going to be transmitted. Let's know how it's going to be collated. Let's know what equipment, what software, what hardware is there to assure us that we won't have a scenario where you have results and you tell This is a second peace accord to be signed by political parties in a bid to guarantee a peaceful political transition due on May 29th this year. Well, it wasn't long after that peace committee meeting in Abuja that reports emerged that at least three persons had been injured in a twin explosion at a rally of the All Progressive Congress in Port Harcourt, River State, and that was on Thursday. The cause of the explosion is still unknown, 
but reports indicate that there was an altercation between youths of Rumuji community, owners of the campaign venue, and APC officials over access to the facility. The youth were said to have been prevented by the party from holding the rally at the field located at the popular My One area of Port Harcourt. In the meantime, it, it has also been reported that the River State Governorship candidate of a court party, Dumo Lulu Briggs, escaped an assassination attempt yesterday, last Saturday, during a visit to a local government area of the state. Lulu Briggs and his team had gone to ascertain reports of an attack on the Accord Party's secretariat in the area when unidentified gunmen reportedly attacked his convoy. He said while he was on his way to the party secretariat, Ms. Kranz opened fire and rained bullets on his convoy. There has been a noticeable ramping up of political violence in and around Port Harcourt, the River State capital, in recent times. The man himself, Dumolulu Briggs, the Akko Party governorship candidate for River State, now joins us from Port Harcourt. Good to see you, uh, Chief Dumolulu Briggs. Well, let's start uh, by you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Abadi, for having me. Yes, thank you very much for honoring our invitation. Can you just take us through what exactly Always. happened yesterday? You have described it as an assassination attempt um, in your effort to go and check out the party secretariat at uh, Eche uh, local government uh, area. What exactly happened and why do you think that there was an attempt to assassinate you? Well, um, I, I don't know uh, what, what, what the intention was. But I know, you know, the gravity of the attack. Um, and I think that if we can judge intention from the gravity, then, uh, you know, we can um, do our postulations. We were built to have a roadshow, as we've done, you know, uh, in so many other local government areas in River State. So yesterday, uh, being Saturday, was for a chair. And then we were to start the roadshow at our campaign headquarters in Ibu Eche. Uh, midway, you know, to a chair, we were asked by uh, the party chairman in the local government area, you know, that we should uh, rather meet at Choco. So we met at Choco and I asked why we were meeting at Choco, and they said, yeah, because, you know, a, a gang of um, PDP persons had just, uh, you know, attacked the campaign secretariat, you know, um, destroyed everything and uh, left the, the entire, you know, workers devastated and all the settings they had, you know, had been destroyed. The stages, you know, had been brought down and all. And I thought, well, it would be responsible if in that situation we would just go to other areas, you know, in the local government and uh, try to run our campaigns rather than, you know, go find out what had happened. So we made a, you know, a detour to go to Ibuichi to find out what it was. As we got close to the venue, we heard, you know, gunshots. Well, the gunshots, you know, people throwing pebbles here and there, old women, children running, you know, helter skelter into different places. Some of our people were confused. They came out of the campaign, you know, vehicles and were run, running to take over, you know, in homes and all that. And my mobile policemen themselves had come out. You know, uh, it was a very pathetic, um, you know, very, very, very sad, you know, situation. And you know, we couldn't tell what was going on. So I just asked my mobile person, you know. Please, you know, be firm, be steady, be steady. Don't try anything, you know, silly. You know, because everybody had come out and uh, maybe in the bid to try to give me protection, you know, anything could have happened. And that's not what we wish, you know. So we tried, you know, to, you know, to reverse. At that point, they said, well, since we're not going further, we can't go further because of the attack. And then, you know, nothing can be done. We, should, we just shouldn't be standing there, you know, as targets. So there was my uh, security vehicle in front, there was a campaign vehicle, next to it, and then was my truck. And then some of that, you know, vehicles, you know, were all behind me, so many vehicles, you know, were behind me. So it was a big challenge, you know, trying to reverse, you know, in that sort of, uh, you know, confusion. So once the um, security vehicle, you know, was able to make a detour, and then the campaign vehicle next to me also made a turn, my vehicle became, you know, exposed as we were trying to turn. And then they threw, you know, they, they, they threw big pebbles, you know, shattered my windscreen and all, you know. and. Uh, I was lucky, you know, but for the size of the car and the strength of the, 
you know, the windscreen. Uh, if that's an um, um, ast asteroid, you know, I would call it, you know, I'd fallen on any part of my body. Uh, that, that probably would have been something, you know, we have been talking about today. So that's, um, you know, what happened. And it's very, you know, you know unfortunate. Doctor, you know, we um, know that um, peace accords have been signed. And uh, Nigeria continues to crumble under the weight of our contradictions. Because what happens, you know, whenever there are breaches? We signed the same peace accord in 2019. And we know what happened, you know, in River City. It was terrible. It was terrible. But River City uh, and across Chief, all the other cities, there are no breaches. Well, Chief, Chief uh, Lulubrex, you mentioned uh, the PDP, uh, yes. you know, uh, parenthetically, I think. Uh, but look, in that same river state, are you accusing the PDP of being behind the attacks on your convoy? Because we also know that the governor of a river state, Yesom Wike, had put in place Order 21, Order 22, the purpose of which is to ensure order in terms of campaigns. So uh, why would you then say PDP? is behind this, when the state government has a framework in place to ensure free access and an orderly, you know, uh, you know, process in terms of uh, political campaigns? Well, uh, uh, Doc, um, first I know that um, for electoral matters, you know, um, the INEC, you know, and the police uh, are in charge. And then of course there was a meeting Call of all the political parties we met with um, INEC also met you know with the police and agreed you know the ground rules and the next day we got you know order 21 and then subsequently you know um, order 22 so we, we do not know how those orders you know that, that came to contradict you know what we what, what we agreed with the police and with INEC can be you know um, orders that have been put in place to ensure you know uh, orderliness of course I mean it was intended to to achieve the exact opposite. But I don't make my statements, you know, um, carelessly. And I've never, you know, mentioned the PDP in this kind of, uh, kinds of matters. But I, but I do so this time, you know, advisedly. And that's, that's because before we got there, the candidate of accord for HA constituency two was himself, you know, there, that was his constituency, making arrangements, you know, with other party stalwarts at the campaign office when the, um, the, the director for revenue mobilization of, in the local government area, and one Frank Wagbu, you know, came there, a company with hoodlums, you know, and all kinds of persons carrying all manner of things, and destroyed the entire place right before the candidates. Now this is a candidate, you know, in the chair, and he knows these persons, and he had also given his own report, and he mentioned names. These are persons collecting revenue for PDP and working with the PDP local government chairman. So when I spoke yesterday, I mentioned clearly that the governor should try and hold a meeting with his chairman, you know, and rein them in. I was in Opobo, sorry, in Boni on the 24th of December, and I went to the market as I usually do. And usually when I go to the market, what do I do? I buy a few things, you know, share with people who are there in the market. And then the Boni local government council chairman came to the market and said, you know what, you have to leave the market. You can't be here. This market was built by the PDP. Now, I, I wouldn't think that the governor would have asked them to do that. You know, these are probably actions of some of our zealous, you know, council chairmen. But however, the box stops on the table. And these are persons, you know, the PDP. In this particular instance, names were mentioned. And that's why I mentioned the PDP. I would have said, oh, well, we were attacked by, you know, uh, hoodlums. The matter had been reported, you know, to the police. Uh, the police commissioner had asked uh, us, you know, to maintain, you know, calm. That it was going to give uh, this matter you know, all the attention that um, it requires. A thorough investigation, according to him, has been ordered. So we wait, you know, for the, you know, uh, for the outcome. But at least they have a few names, you know, they can work with, and then they can start, you know, from there. So I mentioned the PDP in this case because, you know, these are stalwarts of the People's Democratic Party in a chair local government area, identified by the candidate of, uh, of accord in a chair in that same constituency too, where you your or party, or party office is situated. Okay, but, I mean, you mentioned the governor. Okay, under the uh, framework of order 21 and order number 22, do you as candidate, governorship candidate of the uh, Accord Party in River State, do you have the freedom to campaign as you wish? 
or you feel constrained when we, by you know, that number 21 we all feel and under 22? Well, we all feel constrained. You know, at some point I even made a joke, you know, with the press. I think we're here watching, you know. The next order may probably be that you, you press people would need to get the permits, you know, of the Commissioner of Information to be able to speak to us candidates of other political parties. Mm. Because, I mean, what are you talking about, Order 21? If I, if I have, you know, to campaign, I will apply, you know, to my opponent to allow me permi permission, you know, uh, you know to, uh, to campaign. And then, of course, I will pay five million to my, you know, to my opponent, you know, in an election that I'm competing against him, for him to grant me access, you know, you know, to the venue. And even, even, even after I've paid my five million, I may still be denied access, and the money is non-refundable. And so, if I have to do that across the 23 local government areas, that will be five million times 23, and that will be five million times 23 lost to me. So, how does that help me, you know, to, you know, to run campaigns? So, of course, yes, we, I mean, we're constrained. But if you want to be governor of a state like River State, then you must be able to think outside the box. So we have devised an ingenious method of taking our message to the nooks and crannies of River State, which is exactly what we're doing. And I think that you know, the traction that we're, you know, that we're gaining, the acceptance of the River's people, you see old people, ordinary people, men and women on the streets, they run out, they want you know, our caps, they want to touch us, they want to feel me. You know, they, it's, it's very encouraging, you know, the, the outpouring of love. And I think that this is why, you know, suddenly, suddenly there's this much attention, you know, in my campaigns. So what do we do? That we, have, we, we conduct road shows. We go to different communities, you know, show ourselves to the people, go to markets, talk to people, go to, you know, people's homes, knock on doors, you know, and, and talk to them, do our road shows. We are, we're not allowed to have halls because, of course, you know, you, you may need to apply, you know, to get this venue or the other venue. But we can do something around our own campaign offices, which of what we are trying to do in a chair, right? You know, meet first in our campaign office, um, talk to our people, you know, who would have been gathered there, and then you know, take the procession across, you know, the uh, the entire, the, you know, uh, local government. So we were denied, you know, that um, yesterday, but we still went around the chair. Aside from you know, Igbo chair, we couldn't, you know, go to Igbo chair because of what I, you know, what we just explained. But we're able to go to other, you know, other areas of Ichi, and the reception was, um, you know, was was humbling, was humbling, you know, and uh, you know, I I was very happy that I I wasn't discouraged. Uh, this, all of these antics won't discourage us. Where we have set our sights, you know, it's exactly where our strides can take us, and that's, you know, a place that will bring comfort to all rivers people. The reason for the creation of River State that was prosperity. That's the binding, you know. Uh, you know, factor here in River State for, for rivers people. We have, you know, people of, you know, diverse, you know, places, you know, and languages, we have about 28 or so languages here. But when, you know, River State was prosperous, we didn't know who was the query. We didn't know who was a Quaker. We didn't know who was a Goni. We didn't know who was a Calabari. We were one big rivers family. So that our prosperity is lost. And so people have, you know, withdrawn to their cocoons. And uh, today, we, we, you know, we know that this man is the query, this man is this. So it's very unfortunate that we found ourselves in this sort of situation. So we have to recreate that, that, that prosperity. You know, a prosperity that, you know, will leave nobody behind. And that's the one thing that will bind us. We are not all Calabari people in River State. We are not all Equity people. We are not all Ogonis, you know. But the thing that had kept us together was our common prosperity, our common future recognition, you know, that we are all people of a common future. And we repeat that nothing must happen to threaten our sense of a common future. So we continue to crumble under the weight of our contradictions you know, as a country. I mean, we, we sign peace accords, there are breaches now and again, and there's no punishment. You know. INEC have asked the National Assembly to pass the Electoral Offenses Act, it's not been passed. You know, so if there is a breach of the peace accord, what do you do? So I mean, we're just talking to people who are only interested in power, and they will do anything you know, to get power. And if there's no punishment, then it becomes, you know, very unfortunate. Doctor, there are, there are three, you know, basics that are real. That's God, human folly, and laughter. That's nothing we can do about the first two. The first two are beyond our comprehension. So we must do the most that we can with the thought, which is laughter. Put food on people's tables. Put smiles on faces of people. That's the minimum that we're asked to do as human beings. And even at that, I mean, we have failed so terribly. 
Now, those young men who carried guns and knives, you know, in a, in a boiche, if they had jobs, if they had proper education, they would have had no time, you know, to be so engaged. So our politicians, rather than, you know, give our people jobs, rather than give them good education, are arming them with guns and knives, which is rather unfortunate. Is that where we should be, you know, in the 21st century? So that's quite a whole lot that we need, you know, to do. So our mantra, you know, for our campaign is prosperity for all. And because of my, antece you know, my antecedents, right, when we say this, they believe. They know that even when we're not in government, we'll try to do things to affect lives over the years, and we don't do, the to do what we do because of politics. In and out of season, we engage in people's lives and see how we can help them with their education, how we can help them with their small businesses. You know? So they are certain that when we say that we're going to do this, that we're going to do that. What they wanted to know, what was whether or not, you know, I have the capacity to expand the economy. So I accommodate all of us. And that I've demonstrated in my private capacity, the things that I do. I've been able, you know, to work in establishments where, we, we, where we've turned deficits, you know, to humongous profits. You know, so my small businesses are all doing well. And so they can understand that, yes, that we can run River State right as an enterprise. And when we say in River State that what we want to do is to move us from our current you know, paltry annual GDP of $20, $20 billion to about $350 billion. We know exactly what we're talking about. Okay. And we can achieve that, you know, in 16 years. Okay, Chief. We will no, not no. be there in 16 years. But okay. in eight years, by the time we leave, we would have done it in such a manner, a manner that River City would have become too big to fail. Okay, Chief Lulu Brooks, let me go back, perhaps, to the point from which uh, I should have uh, started. Now, can you describe for us the environment for political campaigns in River State. How convenient it is right now to campaign in River State, not just for our court party, but also for other parties. And secondly, the incident that happened yesterday in a uh, local government area, have you reported to the police? What is the police command oh, yes. saying? Oh yes. oh, yes, I did so immediately. I and mean, what I, um... are they promising? Please go ahead. Oh yes, the matter was the matter was reported, you know, uh, to the police. I called the police commissioner. Um, I'm fortunate to have his number, and then a few times I've, you know, I've called him, and of course he's taken my calls and we've spoken. So I tried to assess him yesterday. I wasn't able to do so, but I sent him a text message. I got a response, you know, uh, from him, you know, and I've thanked him, you know, for that response. He had promised, you know, a thorough investigation, but in all of our campaigns, I mean, we have the. Um, Department of State Security team also following the campaigns and all that. So they all have their reports, which they also, you know, would have sent. And because of the response that the commissioner gave, you know, I've, you know, I'm waiting to see what happens with the investigations. At least it has two names, you know, you know, with which to work for. And then we have videos, you know, of the attacks and all that, which, um, you know, uh, uh, has been forwarded. So th we're very hopeful that the investigations, you know, would lead to something. But well, you asked about the, you know, the environment. I think that you know the environment is getting, you know, a bit more tense now as we're approaching, you know, the final, you know, lap of the campaigns. I mean, p political parties that were taken for granted were, are gaining traction, you know, and then the big parties are saying that look, that uh, they are going to face a serious rejection at the polls. So yes, so I mean, I mean, they have become very frantic, I mean, taking actions that they ordinarily would not have taken. So yes, it's getting a bit, you know, uh, more tense. I've been able to go around a few places and I didn't feel, you know, threatened in any way. Everywhere I've gone, the reception has been humongous, you know, so I felt, you know, at home. And then, of course, people know me in River State, that you can't touch me with your dirty politics. You know, that's not where, you know, we want to play at all. So if you're not talking unity, I don't, you know, I don't listen to you. If you're not talking peace and prosperity for all, I'm, I don't listen to you. Right? We must find a way to make sure that River State is one, you know, big family again, you know where uh, there are equal opportunities. Where the Ubi Maman, you know, will sit on the same table, you know, with the Akeni Magyar. Where okay. the, the children of the rich and those of the poor will have the same quality education. That's where, you know, we want to take River State to. Okay. And we're but, talking about humongous things that we want to do. But, you know? So, okay. well, Doctor, you see, the, the major difference between River State and, and, and Lagos today is that River State have not taken advantage of, of our seas. Lagos have made maximum you know, use of their seas. And we see how you know, Lagos have become the fourth or fifth largest economy you know, in Africa. 
right? We have the same opportunities. The dissonance between potential and reality in River State, right, is very disturbing. And that's, you know, my attention now. That's what I, you know, I intend to do. And all of these things I see as distractions, you know, which will come, you know, uh, with the terrain. But with all the efforts that our elder statesmen are making to try to ensure that there's peace, and I mean, the American government who votes huge resources, you know, to support, you know, democracy all over, you know, the world, also, you know, in Nigeria. And I was still talking about violence, you know, being a major component, you know, of our political campaigns and our political life. It's, it's very, very, you know, disturbing. So please, you know, uh, I think that we should get everybody, you know, serious and then let persons understand that there will be punishments, you know, that you can't, you know, uh, uh, be engaged in a uh, violent activity, you know, and then it goes in the name of politics or in the name of campaigns, that you'll be called out, you know, and the appropriate punishments, you know, will be met. I think that, you know, when we, are, when we address that, then of course, yes, people will begin to take us seriously. Otherwise, right now, what we're doing is a contradiction in terms. Okay, Chief, I mean, you must give me the benefit of the doubt that I know how this game is played. Okay, so I won't allow you to just get away yeah, oh, with well. Very play, well. playing the victim, saying, "Oh, no, they, been, they shot at all." You've been, you been, you been there, yes, I understand. <laughs> yeah, I have an idea. Okay, <clears throat> now they did all of this to you a, yesterday. A big one. Tell me about your own counter force, because you can't say you want to be governor of River State and you go out there and you don't have your own counter force. What role is your own counter force playing? Because you must have your own team. People can be shooting at you, and then nobody will shoot back. Nobody will fight back. Tell me about that strategy. Well, you know, you know. Sometimes I wonder, right, if I'm a politician, and I, I think that a lot of persons have said that I'm not ready to be govern governor, you know, of River State. Why would they say that? Because I'm not prepared. No matter the temptation, I am not prepared to get into anything, you know, outside of the law. I will not give any youth even a pen knife, you know, to put in his pocket, you know, and follow me in my campaigns. Even my mobile policemen that have been, at, you know, assigned to me, I asked them not to shoot. And that was what I did even yesterday. Because, I mean, in trying to defend themselves, they had come out. Because, I mean, they were being attacked. They had come out. And I said, please don't shoot. Don't shoot. I mean, River State shouldn't be a theater. And, if you, and, and, and I wouldn't want to be part of that. So, yes, I mean, I probably would have been governor a long time ago if I felt that, you know, that this, you know, these tools can be a part of our political process. No, it cannot be. You know, this is the 21st century, Doc, and I know that you've been involved in this, you know, in this business. But look at Nigeria today, I mean, we're still sleeping as a giant. Why is that so? Because ethnicity, you know, and religion still thrive in our politics, in our campaigns. And we all understand that if you don't get the politics right, you can't get the governance right. And if you don't get the governance right, the economics will not be right. If the economics is not right, then we'll be where we are today. You know? So 2023, we had hoped, will be a defining moment in our politics. You know, a friend of mine once, you know, once wrote that religion, like ethnicity, may inspire, that it may even contain the ultimate truth. But whether by God's will or in consequence of the simple laws of biology and physics, neither religion no ethnicity has been an effective tool for running a successful state. Yet today, in the 21st century, in 2023, in our campaigns and in our political life, we still see how persons have weaponized ethnicity, weaponized religion. It's, you know, it's unfortunate. If Africa would arise, then her giant, you know, has to be awakened from her slumber. And all of these efforts, you know, must be made. So I want to thank you and continue to thank you know, our elder statesmen who are engaged in all of these activities, get everybody to a round table and, you know, try to get them to sign to a peace accord. But beyond just signing up, you know, that peace accord, there has to be consequences for breaches, you know, whenever they occur, until persons know that there are consequences and we shall hold them to account. And I want to also thank the president. We're not in the same party, but I understand the efforts is made to ensure that, you know, a level playing field, you know, is created. I need, you know, the governors of all the states to make the same assurances, you know, that a level playing field, you know, be created. I understand the concerns of other parties. In reverse, I mean, the Social Democratic parties, a candidate has complained several times about, you know, attacks, on his campaign offices and all that. Uh, you also made, you know, a reference to what happened to the All Progressives Congress, you know. So, 
Yes, I accord is not an isolated case. You know, but my politics is clean, and they know that it's clean. They know that we won't fight back, and yesterday is just God. It's just God. I was exposed, you know, to the crossfire. Okay. And they know that I don't arm anybody. I will come with, you know, you know, with a small security team. But the security team that is allowed within the laws, nothing, you know, underhand, nothing undercover. Okay. You know, I'm as Chief, clean as Chief, you can get. Chief, and I've said Chief every Lulu time Briggs. that I have no Godfather except God the Father. Chief Lulu Briggs, final question. Yes, Doc. So that we can move on. Thank you. Well, man. this effort by the National Peace Committee, the Abu Salami Abubakar, uh, Bishop Kuka, uh, Sultan of Sokoto effort, uh, Cardinal John Onayeka, all of them trying to forge peace. Do you think it will work? Do you think anybody is listening? Well, you know, you, you just mentioned that yourself. I mean, your own worry. At just time, you know, um, a day after the peace accord was signed, was, the, was what happened, you know, to the APC here in Riverside as they complained. And we hear that, okay, well, that's uh, as a result of some, you know, uh, misunderstanding, you know, within the community. Now, I don't know how they are going to explain what happened in the case of, you know, the accord, because our party secretary, you know, was attacked, you know. So I do not know, right, if we need, you know, to, uh, to expand, you know, the, you know, the group of persons who must, you know, sign the peace accord. I think that, you know, the president will have to sign the peace accord even though he's not on the ballot. I think that all the governors must sign the peace accord even though some of them will not be contesting, you know, for, you know, you know, for re-election. But we do know how, you know, governors like to have taught them through their process. You know, so even though they won't be on the ballot, uh, they probably will be trying, you know, to ensure that their process, you know, give them a taught term. And so, you know, for that reason, all the governors of all the 36 states will also have to sign, you know, the peace accord and let us, you know, hope uh, against, you know, the evidence uh, that, um, you know, the efforts of these elder statesmen, uh, you know, uh, John Cardinal Naik, whom I respect and hold in very great esteem. You know, General uh, uh, Abdul Salami, who, you know, years after his left office, is still struggling uh, to ensure that, uh, you know, we have a Nigeria that works. I just pray, you know, that um, we are able to, we are able to succeed with these persons by the special grace of God. Okay, on that note, I would like to thank you very you. much. Uh, Chief Lulu Briggs for joining us on this live this Sunday talk show. Mm -hmm.